now we just need to get to this boat and see if we like it. Hey there, I am Jennifer, this is Mark, and this is our new to us Leopard 38 Catamaran Lunacy. Last episode, we jumped right back into boat life as we headed to St. Thomas to see this boat for the first time. So come along and join us as we take a look around and inspect all of the goodies that come along with a boat coming out of charter. Acquiring minds want to see her. So how exactly do you buy a catamaran out of charter when it's in the BVI's and you're not allowed to enter due to COVID? That is an excellent question. Thankfully, the moorings brought the boat to us. After they completed the required survey for leaving the fleet on Tortola, which we could not attend due to COVID, they brought the boat to us in St. Thomas. Because we missed that survey, we did a very thorough self-inspection. And Mark even did a snorkel on the bottom. We had to see exactly what we had gotten ourselves into. For a boat that had been sitting well over a year thanks to COVID, she had surprisingly few issues. The majority of those issues are actually being fixed by the moorings, aka Sunsail, and she seems to be a pretty hardy boat. So after we finished the broker's checklist of basic safety items and functioning of systems, it was time to head out on the sea trial. So day one of sea trial and inspection is done. It went pretty well. Notice I said day one. Yeah, uh, about a, I don't know, half a dozen things worth mm -hmm. worth uh, making sure they fix or discount the, the boat price, so. But I think it's a go on the boat. Oh yeah, we're gonna buy the boat. I don't see, you know, unless they sink it tomorrow while working on it, we're buying the boat, so. Another beautiful morning in St. Thomas means another day of inspections on the boat. So what exactly were we looking for in this catamaran, might you ask? Another excellent question. In addition to a safe, mechanically sound boat, we wanted some creature comforts this go-round. A cockpit with plenty of space to host several friends, and feed more than two or three at a time is definitely a go on this catamaran. The aft galley next to the cockpit keeps me in touch with anybody in the cockpit so I don't feel shut off while I prep food and drinks. And as weird as it might sound, this square salon versus a rounded back salon is a lot more comfortable than the one we had on the Beneteau. Our new girl is a four cabin, two head, so she's the same on each side. We have an aft cabin for us, a semi dry head, which was a definite for me, and a forward cabin that will eventually become our garage. The galleys where the magic happens, I am a huge fan of cooking and eating and sharing food with friends. On the port side, again, it's a mirror image. So we have a forward cabin, a second head, and an aft cabin. So when we do have guests, they have somewhere to stay. Each of the four cabins have their own hanging locker with plenty of space for the small amount of clothing that we keep.
and I am a huge fan of this partially separated shower. After the fully wet heads on the Beneteau, I really truly appreciate the separation here. I don't know about you, but I was always curious about what came included with a charter catamaran purchase. So let's take a look at everything that came with the boat. All right, so this is pretty much everything that came in the galley, minus a couple coffee cups that are still in use and a small pan that I'm using. There's a pot I'm using for breakfast, but we've got silverware, cooking utensils, storage, pots, pans. Um, most of this is Corel. There's four bowls and a silly number of small plates, probably 10, a lot of things have 10. Two sizes of big plates, but it's a mixed bag of patterns. I don't care. Um, here's a different batch of fine bone china with serving ware. And a lot of this plastic stuff, um, these fine drinking glasses, they do have really cool um, rubbery bottoms. So um, we're not, it's very strange. We jump up every time there's a wake because we think our drinks are gonna fall, but we're not on a monohull anymore. So they don't fall at all, even in the craziest conditions. I think we've been on the boat for two weeks now. Um, so while we wait on our crate to show up, which should arrive on island hopefully tomorrow. Um, this has been fantastic. We have graters and bottle openers, wine openers, can opener, um, kind of everything you need, percolator, kettle, everything I need to really get through. But obviously when my things get here, I'll swap some stuff out. So hopefully there's either someone who needs it or um, the Humane Society, I can donate it to them and they can sell it to raise money, but it will find a good home when I'm done with it. But I'm really happy that it all came with the boat. Because it's okay, so another fun thing that came with the charter boat is a crap ton of snorkel gear. I mean, several sets of snorkel gear. And we have our own gear already that we brought with us but I'm gonna show you what all came with the boat and we'll get rid of some of it and some of it we'll keep for guests. Okay, so all of this came with the boat. There's more down here. Mark's already been through this and we're selling this stuff on Marketplace. That's four masks, four snorkels, and I think three sets of fins. And then we've got three sets of fins five sets of fins, five masks, and five snorkels. So we have backups for us, and then we have more if people wanna come and play. Okay, so let's get into linens. Um, we have eight pillows. There's four here and four on our bed. Um, and I at least eight of these pillowcases. There are, honestly, I haven't taken them out of the bag yet, but there are several striped sheets, too many of these fuzzy blankets, I would think at least four. Um, this interesting contraption, which is some kind of pot holder get up. This entire bag is more pillowcases, striped sheets, giant, giant fluffy blue towels, which sounds lovely, but if you've lived on a boat yet, you know that that isn't going to work. Um, they'll never dry. <laughs> they would never, ever dry. So we typically use a terry-backed Turkish towel. We have uh, half a dozen of those. They're much smaller, much thinner. They dry, but they they dry you, but they also dry themselves. Sitting outside pretty quickly. Lots of big fluffy, lots of giant blue fluffy towels. Lots of blue and white striped sheets. Too many really warm fuzzy blankets. Again, those will probably go to the Humane Society. Um, this giant bag. Full of 
white linens. White linens including sheets. Um, various, various towels that I'm not gonna lie, we've already sacrificed several of this size to become temporary floor rugs, um, buffing rags, stainless polishing rags. Um, what's Whatever's left, we will, um, again, find a good home for it. This is not, this is all towels and then this is all sheets. Um, but this is not practical when you live on a boat. It's great when you're chartering, I suppose. Nice fluffy towels just like home. But this is not realistic. First of all, we don't need this much. Where would I store all of this other than giant bags in a spare cabin? And it's just, it's not going to dry. It's not practical. I'll probably keep the sheets because I don't own that many sets of sheets and we do hope to have guests come and visit so they will have nice sheets. I mean, they're nice enough sheets. But that's probably all I will keep from that. So here's the giant bag of um, so one, two, three, that makes sense, four giant fluffy hot blankets. I might keep one of those just in the off chance we go somewhere cold. We don't go cold places. And um, then we have these, I love these. Um, love these as much as I love a sport a seat and those will be on the boat one day but these a sport a seat clicks into place and stays in position these are just cushions but they're cool and there's two outside that we use all the time this one has been relegated to a work cushion um, it's got stains on it so Mark can use it under his knees and then we have five more up there so five six with eight of these suckers we may keep a couple, but we won't keep eight. I think that's it for linens, and it is hot and sweaty in this cabin, so that's enough for now. So she also came with lines and fenders, which we are using some of at the moment. Because she was a charter boat, she comes with, this one comes with 100 gallons, 100 gallons, and 50 gallons worth of water storage. She did not come with the hose. She did come with the uh, charcoal grill, which we will replace with a gas grill. She came with about just shy of 150 feet of chain and a stainless delta anchor. Over here we have the fenders, fenders and lines, and they're all in good shape. Um, in this case, Lunacy actually came with a spare Genoa that is not standard. I think rather than repair that one, they gave us a newer one that, other than a couple of stains, which I might be able to clean, is actually in really good shape. You'll have to trust me on that one. The trampoline is also in good shape. Back to this Genoa, um, I think they just tossed in the one we're using versus to replace this one because they don't really have any more 38s. Um, so they didn't need that size Genoa anyway, and it made us very happy. So how do you buy a boat during COVID? That's what we had to figure out. We had a contract in July that was an agreed upon price 
it had a stipulation that there would be a survey as you should always have there was agreed upon stipulation for closing in November because we did not want to close on a boat in hurricane season in the hurricane belt or box or whatever this is and there were stipulations as well for a sea trial and a personal inspection because we knew that we were not likely to make it to the survey in the BVI's because everything shut down. Yeah, there was a small window to, to make that, but yeah, we thought in all, we thought we were going to do a survey in August, and yeah. then another COVID surge happened, and we couldn't get to the BVI's, and they are still shut down, as everybody knows. So that carried on kind of as planned. Um, we closed a couple weeks later than expected, but it worked out. The um, the moorings, it's a sun sail boat owned by the moorings. The moorings brought the boat to us in St. Thomas into a marina. We did the sea trial, as you saw. We did our personal inspection. We had already seen the survey, and um, that was it. That's how we bought a boat during COVID. Yeah, overall, it was a it was a good process. It wasn't I mean, terrible. It, yeah. I would... Okay. We have officially been on the boat for three weeks, I think. I think tomorrow is three tomorrow weeks. Tomorrow is three weeks, yeah. What do you think of the boat? Uh, I love it, but I'm ready for it to be, like, for all our projects to get done, I guess, so we can actually go cruise. That'd be cool. There's just nowhere to cruise right now. I mean, we yeah. could go, like, to that beach over there. We could there. sail over there. Or we could sail over there. There. We could, I guess not having everything done we don't have the freedom we're kind of tied down so it would be nice to be able to go even if we choose not to right so let's talk yeah. about what we have to do oh i love the boat the boat's awesome and catamaran life is a million times easier than on a whole life yeah i think so i've been i've been working the last couple of weeks on uh helping out one of the local marine places and doing a little bit spending a lot of time on 45 to 55 and 60 foot cats there is no way i would want just i would not want a cat that big there the systems are too complex there's mm -hmm. looking at the maintenance bills that some of the bigger cats um, have on them like i think this size cat and so, i so just to clarify we were looking for a 38 to no no we were not we were looking for a 40 to 42 foot we knew a 44 was too big and we thought from our experience that a 38 yeah. was too small for long term. And when we got on the 38 sister ship to this, we got on the 38 this summer in Wilmington. We we're like, holy crap, this is a really good layout. It's enough space for us. It's got the, as you saw earlier, it has the kind of semi dry heads. It has the cozy couch. It has plenty of space in the cockpit for friends to visit. It, has kind of, has and it's I mean it's in good shape that should helps, that yeah. should go without saying <laughs> it seems to be a safe boat um, and from what we've seen it's a perfectly well built production boat which we're used to yeah I think the the biggest thing I've the biggest difference I've seen and I so I, I today I was on three like 44 to 45 foot boats catamarans it's the exact same boat it's just everything like so the hallway is a little bit bigger squished. the cabins are a little bit bigger the the salon is a is actually the salons salons are usually quite a bit bigger but it's also multiple inverters multiple power systems I mean, there's just so much more stuff to go wrong and then you look at the cost to birth them and to haul and it to haul them to paint the bottom yeah every single cost Every, is everything's exponentially. Yeah, exponentially higher so i think this is going to wind up being the perfect boat for us. Hopefully there's not an LS3 two or three years from now. That was me cutting. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, so what are we gonna do to this boat? What do we have left to do? Number one, we need our crate. It's right over there, but it's not been released On yet. On top of that hill, but we can't have we it. We can't have it yet. Um, let's see, so what do we have? We have Watermaker, well, Seawater Pro. Yeah. That wanna, came in. Do you wanna go in order or you wanna? Well, that's what's here. Solar's on island, but we don't have it. What else do we have? We got to finish installing the barnacle. Security system. If you don't know what a barnacle is, go to brnkl.io and check them out. Uh, Pretty cool. Very cool systems, uh, boat monitoring from anywhere in the world. 
All right, security system, water maker, lithium. Our battleborn stuff's on the way with all the Victron components. Solar, as I said, is on island. It just has to get released to us. Inverter. Yeah, that's one of the Victron components. DC to DC chargers. Yeah. That's really it. It's really power system. Water. Power and water. Power and water. So, this is our boat. This is how it looked when we got it. So that should give you some realistic expectations if you go to buy a boat out of charter. So um, if you want to check out all of the system updates that we're going to be doing over the next month, month seven and months. a half, we thought we were going to be finished in four weeks. We're rolling into four weeks. We don't even have our stuff here. So <laughs> it was a little Island life. <laughs> overly ambitious on our part. So we're th it's probably a realistically, the, I think four to six weeks, we should be done with the boat and have From now. From now, yeah, four to six weeks from now, we should be complete. So if you want to check up, check out those upgrades, please subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you have any questions about what we're installing or why we picked what we picked, send us a comment. Yeah, comments are great, and let us know any other videos you'd like to see. And thanks for watching. Take one.